first created this image in 2012, I was actually living in Phoenix, Arizona. I had moved out there um, to be involved more in the political battle against our pile against SB 1070 and you know groups that I wanted to work with out there like Puente and uh, and other you know immigrant rights and indigenous rights groups that were out there. Um, you know I wanted to go to be in support of them. So while I was out there. You know, I was I had a lot of time to to work on new graphics, and it was it was a really nice you know creative time in my life. And um, I remember working on a graphic, starting it, and it was just like the sun. And I had worked on this sun, and it was kind of like inspired by a lot of the a lot of the folks that were I was around at the time. So I you know I'd hang out at this place called uh, Tona Tierra, which was like the embassy of uh, indigenous people. And a lot of the folks there, mostly Chicanos and, you know, Southern native folks from Mexico, um, they would, they had a lot of iconography around, a lot of, a lot of Mexica stuff, you know, and, and so, you know, I'm not Mexica, my family comes from, from Yaqui ancestry, but I remember seeing a lot of the, the graphics around, a lot of the, the, uh, the glyphs and, you know, a lot of the folks there, they, they actually understood what they meant and, you know, they would explain things to me every now and then and I was kind of picking things up and I remember someone telling me you know or I think it was one of the elders said something about like the sun represents like you know male energy and the the moon represents you know female energy and the, that's like kind of like the balance of of the energies right and you know obviously now with with the way that uh the cultures move forward there's there's like no need for that binary you know um it's it's a mix it's a it's a spectrum it's there's a lot of gray area there's fluidity and so but at the time i wanted to create an image about like about balance harmony um you know really inspired because you know everything that's happening here on earth whether it's global warming whether it's oppression it's a lack of balance and harmony right there's whether it's uh you know, too many people have power over other folks and they oppress them or it's, you know, we aren't um, being respectful of Mother Earth and hyper exploiting it. Not not we as in us, but like, you know, other humans that are, you know, that run corporations and run really big uh, conglomerates that just completely pillage the earth and also pollute and create uh more co2 and you know the tides rise and the the temperatures rise and then now we have we're in the situation so that's all from a lack of balance right and um so i wanted to create a piece about what you know what harmony looked like and at the time it looked like this because because i wasn't kind of entrenched in that world with those folks and so obviously i mixed in the, the flower of life which you know that kind of goes back yeah, to the Egyptians and it's a symbol that means that everything is you know unified everything is connected and it's also connected to like the the the, the Lakota um, philosophy of you know we're all uh, related you know everything is related um, and if you see the, the the graphic you know at the bottom you have the Sun um, and it's a it's a little larger than the moon obviously when we you know and in, in, in the actual solar system the the sun is a lot bigger than the moon so that's that's the main reason why i did that it wasn't you know i wasn't trying to be you know patriarchal in that sense even though you know someone could break this down and find patriarchy within it which i'm i'm open to you know it's it's a it would be a a critique to be had i guess you know and, and i i'm open to people being critical and and uh and dissecting my work for sure because i want you know i want to grow and i want my work to get better and so you know, this image again is from 2012. In the in the sun, you see the little circles that are kind of going around. That to me kind of represents the Earth. You know, the Earth rotating around, or or all the other planets really, like rotating around the sun. And then um, and then the sun rays. If you look at it closely, um, you will see that there is there is um, like sand dunes in it. And the and the reason why I put the sand dunes was, you know, I would I was I was living in Phoenix. And sometimes my parents, you know, you know, I was already an older person, you know, I was like 20 something, 27, 26, but I would have really bad anxiety and I just wanted to go home and I didn't do that drive alone. You know, I don't 
drive on the freeway. I get too much anxiety. So I always have to go with someone. And when I didn't find a friend to go with me to the valley, which was like three and a half hours uh, southwest, my parents would come and pick me up. And one time they picked me up. And um, I remember they were in this in their white Sentra. And I would hate that car because it was like a fishbowl. It, it didn't have any tinted windows. So I'd be in the back, just like in the back seat, just burning up because the, the sun's just kind of going, you know, hitting the window. And it's really hot. And, you know, it's in Arizona. It's 100 and something. And the AC is not really reaching back there. I know first world problems. But I remember being back there and trying to draw. And, like, you know, it's like there's a glare in my sunglass in my glasses and and uh, I'm drawing and I remember I had started this graphic maybe like six months before but I hadn't finished it I'm like I need something to go in the rays I had basically where the where the sand dunes are at in the in the sun rays there was nothing in there I think there was just lines but it wasn't it was kind of clashing with the lines in the rays in the back so I needed to figure that out and while we're driving there past you know you know when you're driving from Phoenix to El Centro you uh, you drive southeast, so you eventually get to Yuma, Arizona, and then once you pass Yuma, you see the you know the buttercups, the the the, uh, the sand dunes, and that's what you know they filmed some of uh, Star Wars back then, you know, in that area, and it's just a lot of you know really beautiful sand dunes, and people are driving their uh, dirt bikes and quads and you know uh, off-road vehicles on there, and I remember seeing them, I'm like, that's what I want, and they're like, I want the sand dunes, and it was just because I was. I, had, I was still thinking about that graphic at that moment. And when we passed the sand dunes, I'm like, oh, that's what I'm going to put in there. And it's like, to me, it was like, you know, it was more of the, I loved how the sand dunes look. But I also, the way that they take the, you know, sand dunes are usually in areas where where it's really hot, you know, in Sahara and in areas like where I'm from, there's a lot of sand dunes, but it's super hot and it's, you know, deflects the heat. Um, and... So, you know, that was kind of the reason behind it. That, I guess that was not too deep other than like when I was thinking about it, I saw sand dunes. I'm like, oh, I like how that looks. Let's put it in here. But it ended up working perfect. And so when as we move up into the moon, I put the crescent moon in there. And, and to me, that was kind of a symbolism of like, you know, obviously the crescent moon uh, of Islam. But it's also I always think about, you know, Malcolm X. When I think of the crescent moon, I think of of like people's power. I think of. Uh, of, you know, at that time, you know, I was like, oh, you know, that's like militant black uh, movement for for black power and dignity. Right. So I, I was I was inspired by that. But I also kind of was keeping in, in the same um, theme as like the, the indigenous learnings that I was learning. So it was like, you know, it's connected to the women. So when you look at the crescent moon, you only see a sliver. But then the other side that bl- that Earth is blocking, you know, like the 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 part that is eclipsed or the part that is in the shadow like i put i put the the symbolism of 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 women in there which is you know connected to water um every time the moon you know it has different phases it does affect the tides of uh of the oceans so i included that in there you see there's there's waves there's water and then there's also an abstraction of an embryo so because women are birth givers um, again, that was in 2012, you know, now, now that's also contested. Like, you know, there's people that, that, uh, that are able to, to give birth. There's people that are able to be pregnant and it's gender, you know, obviously now, uh, we are not looking at it in that way as I did before. So, you know, again, this is all up for, um, discussion. And if anyone wants to educate me, if I said anything that came off wrong, just let me know, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be fragile about it. I'm trying to learn as well. So. You know, this piece is called uh, Ghana Sun Moon. I made it in 2012. It's a uh, it's one of my favorite graphics. I've been wanting to do an HPM of it. And um, the reason why I kind of held back was because it's so technically intense, you know, and, and I didn't I had made I had made the separations to paint it like six months ago. And it was like a bunch of layers. It was like, you know, gold over black, black over gold, this thing over that thing. And it was just completely like. It would have been so much it was a lot of labor and it was still a lot of labor but because i've been working on new new work we created new techniques like now i'll cut my my stencils in the laser on a flatbed and then i lay transfer tape and i completely you know keep the whole stencil intact and then i transfer it onto my paper and then we take the tape off really carefully so it doesn't disturb the stencil and then we weed it out like if it would be a vinyl sticker and then we paint it and then we weed that out 
So it's a lot, a lot of labor. And, um, you know, that's the reason why this is going to be a timed edition, because I don't I was thinking, you know, if I do a full edition and it takes us so much labor and so much resources and, and like, you know, it gets expensive and it's a time of COVID. I got to be, you know, as, as price conscious as I can. Um, I might end up making more than than what people are going to be able to to afford for a while. So, you know, or to be able to buy for a while or be interested in buying for a while. So that's why I'm doing these as a timed edition. Um, and I will put more information to come. Thank you.